Now to Israel, where the defence minister has spoken out against his own government's policy by calling for planned judicial reforms to be halted. Yoav Gallant said the continuing mass protests against the proposals were causing deep divisions, which he claims are affecting the fighting capability of the Israeli Defence Force. Opponents against the controversial reforms fear they will undermine the country's democratic institutions. And two Israeli cabinet members have since called for the Defence Minister's dismissal, accusing him of disobeying orders. Well, this is what Yoav Gallant had to say. For the sake of Israel's security, for the sake of our sons and daughters, the legislative process must be stopped. For the sake of our security and our unity, it's our duty to return to dialogue and to remember that we are all brothers. Well, let's bring in Yossi Meckelberg. He's Associate Fellow of the think tank Chatham House. Uh, Yossi, this is a calculated decision for the Defence Minister. You don't just speak out on the spur of the moment. He's risking his position. What's your take? Well, he spoke up, and I think it's important that he did, and it's the only shame is that he took 12 weeks for what many of us think is the most obvious thing to say. Uh, Netanyahu would have, never should have been in a position forming a government while he faces corruption trial on, on serious uh, allegation of bribery, fraud, and breach of trust. This actually what drives the entire judicial coup that is taking place right in Israel. So it's between Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, tried to avoid the, his, his trial coming to a conclusion, and some extreme far-right ideologists that are trying to destroy the judiciary in Israel. And the result of it is a split within the nation and 12 weeks of, of protest. And as, as it happens on Thursday, Netanyahu actually told, told the court told the nation that he's not going to listen to the Supreme Court. He's violating actually an agreement that it won't deal with issues of conflict of interest between Israel and the legislation with the judiciary. And as of today, the Supreme Court, the president of the Supreme Court, uh, asked him actually to respond to a petition that he's in contempt of court. This is the depths of the divisions right now in Israel. But when you have so many issues in a collision course at the moment, protests on the streets, you know, in the 11th, 12th week, protesters saying that they bring the cities to a halt, you have this minister speaking out. At the same time, other ministers on the far right, albeit, saying that he needs to be dismissed from office. So what gives? Is it his job or could he lead to potentially encouraging a reform and, and well, encouraging the government to stop the planned reforms? Well, it's a great question. And I think the key is in Prime Minister Netanyahu hand. Which direction is he going? Let's, let's make it clear. Prime Minister Netanyahu doesn't believe one iota in this, in this so-called judicial reform. He's doing that for one reason and one reason only, to get off the hook of his corruption trial. Now, if he cares about the national interest of Israel, he will follow Mr. Gallant's uh, statement. Because the defense minister is really worried that many reservists in Israel, which is the backbone, of Israel's uh, defense are actually refusing to serve a government that leads Israel from a liberal democracy to the da to dark age of dictatorship. That's what's the crux here. At the same time, high-tech people, which again, this is the, the spine of Israel economy, uh, they, they, they're moving their money out, they're moving their companies out. They are leading to the actually the destruction, not only the democracy, but also the Israel society and economy. So it's for prime minister to do something that only thinks probably to resign. I don't think he's going to do that. Or at least slow down the, the judicial uh, reforms or more a coup than a reform and enter into a national dialogue. And briefly, you know, we, Benjamin Netanyahu given a speech this week, televised address, saying that he's listening. He wants to come up with a solution that uh, satisfied all sides, including the, the protesters, but says he will go ahead with these reforms. Just spell out for us what it is that the opposition is so worried about with the judicial reforms themselves. Well, the reality doesn't listen. If he says that he will continue, when yesterday there were more than 600,000 people in the streets protesting against it, it's about appointing judges to the Supreme Court by the politicians instead of a more, a, a more complex system which is more fair and objective to appoint them. It's about the Knesset overriding legislation uh, by, by the politician. It's about, about appointing uh, 
legal advisor in, 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 in Palm, there is a series of legislation there that will actually weaken the judiciary and especially the Supreme Court in, and give power to the politician. And this can only lead into a dictatorship. Yossi, thank you. Yossi Meckelberg, Associate Fellow at the think tank uh, Chatham House. Now,